Hello there and good evening and a very warm welcome to the Love Audio Production YouTube channel. My name is Paul Weber, the host. Great to have you along this morning, this evening, this afternoon or tonight. Uh, yeah, it's kind of just gone 8 o'clock British summertime, so whatever time it is, wherever you are uh, around the world, please do let us know. Uh, so, uh, what is Love Audio Production all about? Essentially, it is a fun, safe, friendly and hopefully entertaining, entertaining and informative platform, in which I can get the words out properly, uh, for you to learn the basics in audio production. So if you guys are on board with that, then let's crack on. And as we normally do, we say hi to some people first of all. Hello to Rob Thomas. First in this evening, Robert. Good to see you. Thank you very much indeed for joining from Ohio, I believe. Um, also, Ina, communication social media live streaming is in the house from Denmark. Good to see you as well. And hello to Danny Davis, uh, listening from the southeast of England. Thank you very much indeed. Evening just in time. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. So uh, welcome to tonight's stream. I was going to go through some of the settings in the Rodecaster Pro for the voiceovers uh, that I do. And, you know, people, uh, there's a lot of videos, in fact, I've been watching a few of them this evening. A lot of them are saying, you know, um, that they they have to kind of tweak all the settings and everything to get it just right in order to record into things like Adobe Premiere uh, and uh, you know the Adobe Suite and stuff like that. Whereas you know what I've done is is I've dialed in what I think is the best sound for this microphone and for this environment. But of course everything's going to change and and you know people will dial in different settings for their own voice. So it's worth paying attention to the settings that I've got just in case they kind of are very similar and you've got a similar environment to, to the one that I have. Um, as you know, we've changed locations. We're now in the garage, uh, or in a garage, I should say, not the garage, but it's in a garage. Uh, and so the acoustics in here are not too bad because we have a sloping roof and the, the acoustics bounce off the side of that. I've got some acoustic panels either side of me, which is what you need to to cut down on those kind of, um, uh, you know, reflections that you're going to hear either side of, of, uh, of your voice and, and the speakers and everything else. Um, and I've got uh, some acoustic panels just behind the camera as well, just to kind of stop that reflection going towards the back of the garage or to the front of the garage where the garage door is, which, of course, is metal. And it's a flat surface, so there's nothing on there stopping any sound from, from kind of bouncing around. Also, the walls are, uh, you know, these thick bricks, these kind of uh, breeze blocks, as you call them. Um, and there's nothing between that and the outside world. So, <laughs> so if you hear some birds partway through the, the challenge uh, or the, uh, the program tonight, then you'll know why. Uh, there's also a dog next door, and sometimes he or she hears me and starts barking and, and stuff like that. Um, so that's interesting. And I've just found, I just met the guy just behind me, in fact, uh, called James. His son has just started learning drums. And he's got a full-size drum kit in his garage. And was listening to his son practice tonight. I'm going, that's really exciting. And uh, introduced myself over the fence, you know, all that kind of stuff like you do. And, and said, yeah, you know, interesting to hear what's going on in there because I run a YouTube channel, this, that, and the other, audio production, blah, blah, blah. Um, and so, yeah, we got chatting and everything else. So, um yeah, fair play to the lad learning to, to play drums in the garage. Um, he stopped about an hour ago, so um, not not because you know, not because of anything I said. <laughs> Far from it for me to to stop anybody practicing music. I think it's a fantastic thing, um, but I think it was just you know end of the night sort of thing, and yeah, didn't want to go into into darkness and stuff by still playing the drums. But anyway, so yeah, going to go through some settings tonight, and and rather than having the overhead camera. Um, I'm going to show you some software that comes with the Rodecaster Pro so that we can dial in and have a look at those settings individually. Uh, Danny says it sounds like a soap opera over the garden fence gossip. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right. It's brilliant. Um, and, and they've they've got a they've got a jacuzzi, you know, one of these hot tub things. Um, and I'm tempted to ask if I can use it <laughs> or borrow it, you know. Who knows? Um, maybe they'll offer. Maybe they'll have a barbecue or something and invite us around. Who knows? Um, but that's for the future. Let's go back to tonight. So um, what we're going to do is look at the software that comes with the Rodecaster Pro. And if I go to the uh, screen here, uh, you'll see that up on screen. So we'll get rid of that one there. And what you initially come up with is this panel here. And then you just go into the settings there and go to Effects Editor. And that brings up this panel here on the... Um, on the right hand side and if you go back to the settings in total you see along the top here you've got one two three four those indicate the microphones that you've got uh, maybe plugged in i've only got 
something plugged into number one and number four. Uh, number four currently is not switched on. That's the lapel mic that I sometimes use uh, on my live streams. So that's not plugged in currently. So we're not actually dealing with any of that. But what we will do is look at um, number one. So here's the high pass filter. What that's doing is rolling off the bass notes that you that you get from your voice. So if I take it off, for instance, uh, all of a sudden that becomes a lot more bassier than it would be normally. So what I'm doing is rolling off some of that bass by enabling it, and that's enabling 38 hertz of so anything rather anything below 38 hertz is being rolled off from my voice. I could actually raise that a bit, so bringing it to about let's have a look. So so you can hear it's gone really really tinny now. It's 194 hertz, so that's really too much. What you want to bring it down to about. 40 to 45 hertz, 50 hertz possibly. Anything lower than that, you don't really need. So if you drop it right off completely down to 20 hertz, you're starting to get that bass, uh, and that's going to be too much for when you're doing voiceovers and things because there's an opportunity then for you to pop when you say the the, the, the letter P or F where the, the noise goes across the diaphragm. So what you want to do is roll off some of that bass. So between 45 and 50 is probably about right. I'm going to go with 50 hertz because that's about average, to be fair, uh, when we're rolling off bass notes. So let's go with that. Now, this is interesting because you'll notice that later on when we get down this list of things to check, one of the effects on there actually puts bass back on. <laughs> so one's kind of fighting against the other. But what this does is gives you an overall effect of, of how you know, how the, the high-pass filter works, okay? So what it's doing essentially is letting anything that's high frequencies go past, but it's rolling off the bass notes, anything lower than 50 hertz, okay? So let's move along now to the noise gate. Now, the noise gate, as you know, I do like the noise gate. I like the one on the, the vMix software that I use as well, uh, which, of course, is, if I roll across to that, you'll see this is the uh, vMix software that I use, and I use a noise gate on that as well. Um, and, and what that does is, so when you stop talking, you can't hear any hiss from the computer underneath the desk, for instance. You can't hear any background noise, anything like that. So... The noises are still going to be there when you speak, but when you stop speaking, that's when, they, that's when the gate kicks in and, and, and prevents anything from coming through. But you can adjust the threshold of that. So let's take a look at that. So threshold, first of all, I've got at negative 48.6 dB. Now you can use the arrows to kind of scroll up through, or you can just use the slider on the threshold itself. So, so that's, that, that's, that's cutting off too much. Every other word that I'm speaking is being, is being stopped by the gate. Do you see what I mean? So that's far too much as regards threshold. So you want to bring that down. And so it, well, let's, let's start with, with zero. So we're on negative 60 dB. So the gate is working, but not very efficiently. So we're going to bring that up to around about negative 46.8 dB. There, there or thereabouts. And with regards to the attack, you know, the attack is, you know, how quickly do I want that to come in? I've got currently 69.2 milliseconds, okay? If I want it to come in quicker, then I would roll it down to about 1.2 milliseconds, even less than that. So less than, less than a third of a millisecond coming in there. So it's coming in really quickly. Okay, so if I did that, it wouldn't come in for, for some time, but I'm going to roll that down to about a millisecond there like that. And how long would I like it to be held for? It's got 0.16 of a second. Okay, if I want it any longer than that. Now, can you hear that? So if I, if I stop talking, it holds, it, it holds the gate open, if you will, for 1.36 seconds. But that's far too long because you can now hear my computer fan. So the idea is that you don't want it to hold for too long. So I drop that down to about 0.2 of a second, 0.12 of a second, maybe 0.16. It was, it was on before, wasn't it? Yeah. Let's bring it down to, one, to 0 0.20 of a second. That's not too bad because it cuts off really quickly after you start, you know, stop speaking, that kind of thing. And the release. So when would you like it to be released? Again, that's kind of like the whole thing. 
So we would like a very quick release, so bringing it straight back again after you finish speaking, shutting that gate, not letting anything else through. That's the whole idea of the noise gate, okay? So we're going to bring that down. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah, you see now I'm, breath I'm, I'm like breathing in. And it's not picking up any of that, uh, that breath sound, so that's fine. Some, you know, sometimes in speech, then you might want that breath to be heard. For instance, when you're reading a story, you might want to hear the breath that the narrator is, is, is uh, taking in order to deliver that, that, that next line. So in that case, you would probably disable the noise gate so that you can hear me now breathing properly. So let's say, for instance, I was reading a paragraph from a book. Da -da 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 -da. But you can hear the noise of the fans from the computer and all the other noise in the background. So, you know, having it on is good. But then you can adjust the threshold to let that breath come through if you wish. Or you can, you can decide, you know, how, how these settings are going to affect uh, your overall voiceover. Now let's look at the range. This is this bottom um, section here. Now this is, this is detecting a certain range of dB. So we had it kind of around about there which is not too bad, 25.9 dB. So it's actually picking up, if I go to there, to 0 dB, it's not on at all. So in other words, the range is like having your noise gate not on at all, if that makes perfect sense, okay? So what I would do is bring it down to about 25.9 dB. That's only picking up my voice as the range in that case. It's not picking up anything other than my voice which is exactly what I want. <laughs> That's how a noise gate works. Okay? If you want to be really, really tight with it, then bring it down to 100 dB. That's ridiculous because, you know, yeah. We want to keep it around about... Can you hear those birds in the background? See, when I talk, you'll hear the birds. It's crazy. So I, I really need to do some work on the soundproofing of this garage. <laughs> anyway, that's the noise gate. So let's, let's move on to the next section here. Now, a de -esser. What's a de -esser? Well, when you say the word S, you have what's called sibilance. Sibilance. And it's kind of like a whistle, and it's created by the, the, the air going across your teeth and your tongue as you speak. So S's, predominantly S's, T's are another one, um, things like that. So, you know, the sharp end, the kind of t -t 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 -t, that kind of range is what you're looking at with regards to the de -esser. Now, you'll notice that I haven't got the de on, okay? And the very good reason for that is that I want people to hear my diction clearly without being interrupted by a de okay? So, let's put it on and see what happens. So, this is now the de on, and it cuts down a lot of those kind of s -s -s -s, those S's. So, for instance, if I was reading my introduction, it goes like this. Welcome to Love Audio's YouTube channel. My name is Paul Weber. It's great to have you along this evening, this afternoon, this morning. Wherever in the world you're watching this from, do let me know in the comments, especially if you're new here. Now, it's not a bad sound, okay? But when it comes to voiceover work, your producer, if you're sending it to, to the producer to be, to be produced, you want them to be able to hear all the nuances of your voice. You don't necessarily want to trim back on, on anything like that. So I would suggest on this occasion, probably leaving it off. So now that's back to normal, and you can hear the S's and the T's as I would normally pronounce them, okay? Uh, it, it's, a, it's a personal preference, don't get me wrong. It, it's entirely up to you how you want to use it. We'll put it back on. We can adjust the frequency that it's trying to pick up, okay? So anything from 1,000 hertz up to 8,000 hertz, okay? 8,000 hertz, is, is, that, is that really top end? So it's letting some of those through. If we go to mid-range... So around right about the 2,880 hertz range, uh, that's not too bad. You can also adjust the gain, so you can bring more gain in if you need to. So, can you hear that? So that's now acting like a compressor. That's bringing that volume up because I've increased the gain by 4.9 dB. So whenever you take something down, um, you might need to make up some gain with the gain knob there, okay? So for instance, on the frequency side of things, if we keep it about there, we're going to need to bring some gain up, so probably 2.6 dB of gain on top. And the attack, yeah, not too, but well, you know, you can hear that kind of kicking in 
So, 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 yeah, I don't know. It's difficult. You have to kind of play with that. The ratio is 2.4 to 1. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 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 ten. Again, you know, around about the 2.4 mark would be fine. Sammy Superstar, hello to you. Good evening. Welcome. And the threshold, again, you can you can adjust this accordingly. So that's pretty much with the ds off. So negative 1.1 dB. If you drop it right down to there, you can hear that's really muffling my voice now. It's, it's, it's cutting off almost everything above that kind of frequency range that we talked about, the three 3,000 hertz. Okay. So I'm going to bring it in about there, I would suggest. Very nice, he says. Bring the gain down to about there. And frequency, yeah, run right about there is where it starts to... And that's, that's not a bad setting, to be perfectly honest with you. I'm probably going to leave it like that. And again, if I turn it off, that's kind of similar to my normal voice. Do you see what I mean? So if I put it back on, that's a de on. There's not a great deal of difference between that and turning it off completely. So I'm happy with that. And, and that's the, the kind of balance that you want, really, is um, what do you suggest for radio, says, uh, says Danny. Uh, radio is slightly different because you're after that kind of beefy, um, you know, FM radio type sound. So I would probably leave it on, but I, I would, I don't, it's, it's so difficult and it's going to vary from voice to voice, Danny. It's a very good question. And, and, you know, like I said before, every person's voice is going to be different and you're going to have different settings for according to whatever you're going to be doing, whether it be broadcasting, whether it's podcasting, whether you're doing live streaming like we are tonight. Um, or whether you're recording something, maybe a voiceover, a video, perhaps, all that kind of thing. So it's it's going to be different for, 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 for very many uses, and you're going to just dial in the settings that appeal to you. And, you know, when you listen back to it, you'll go, oh, yeah, actually, that was a bit too much. I'm going to drop the DS down a bit next time or turn it off or whatever it might be. But, yeah, just play around with these settings. If you have a Rodecaster Pro, you're watching this on a playback, um, do leave me a comment and uh, let me know how you dial your settings in for this particular um, piece of hardware, okay? And, you know, rather than having the, rather than having the overhead camera uh, on the, the actual touchscreen, this kind of mimics that anyway. So, I, I, you know, I'm fine by showing you this on screen uh, instead of showing you the actual machine itself, okay? So let's move on now to the compressor. Now, what you'll see here is a couple of dotted lines. There's a dotted line there, and there's a solid line there, and there's a red line at the top that says zero, okay? Now, if we turn the compressor off, that's the compressor off, and it automatically takes away some of that kind of dynamic sound that you would like, particularly you're talking about radio, Danny, you want the compressor to be on. Now, I know that when you do your radio shows, you record it almost dry like this because you have no settings on the actual sound card. But then when it comes to being broadcast on air, it puts its own set of compression alongside that, that voiceover that you just recorded. Now, I like to have a bit of compression on, so I'm going to put the, the compressor back on. You'll notice that the gain is at 5.6 dB. That's quite high. Actually, I'm going to drop that down slightly because it's, uh, it's slightly too overpowering. Threshold, again, you can adjust that down. So that's you can see that the red line now is working really, really hard. Now, if I, if I put the gain up again like that, that's now giving you that FM radio sound. So it's kind of squishing it. But also, it's it's catching every single breath and every nuance of my voice, and it sounds kind of like FM radio. Do you know what I mean? So that's the kind of jockey sound that, that you get from from having heavy compression on, and having a high gain as well. So yeah, I don't like it at all. <laughs> I really don't like it. Um, so that threshold is going to come back up, and what that means is I'm letting more of my natural voice through rather than having it compressed. So let's bring the gain back down again. We don't need it quite that high. And then the threshold, again, looking at negative 23 dB. The ratio is always two to one for me. Uh, that's, <clears throat> that's just the way I like <clears throat> Excuse me. That's just the way I like that, that particular sound. The attack are coming in at quite quickly at 0 0.2 milliseconds and then releasing at 0.22 of a second. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you can hear the difference if I turn that off. That's now with the compression off. So no, process, no processing on that whatsoever. And then we bring that in. 
and you get that fullness that that you expect with um, with having a compressor across the voice. <clears throat> I'm starting to lose mine. That's not good, is it? <laughs> Let's go to the the final setting here on the bottom. It's called Aphex. Now this is the um, uh, these are built in. Aphex is a copyrighted uh, feature that Rodecaster have adopted with regards to these uh, two features of sound processing. Now, the Aural Exciter. Aural is spelled A U R A L. By the way, uh, Aural Exciter. And we're just going to dive into some of the settings. I don't really know much about it, to be perfectly honest with you. I'm going to turn them both off. Okay, so we've turned off the big bottom. Okay, that's what that's called. <laughs> and we turned off the oral exciter. So now what you get is my natural voice, but through a um, compressor. The de is on, I believe. I can't remember. If we, did we do the de Let's have a look. Yeah, so the de is on. And the compressor is on. Okay. The noise gate is on. And the high pass filter is on. Okay, so go out to the Aphex. And this particular one, the Aural Exciter, puts a bit of what I would call sparkle on your voice, okay? So if we, if we turn that on, you can instantly hear that the, tss, 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 the top end is enhanced by the software built into um, the Rodecaster Pro. And it's made by Aphex, okay? So we can, we can change this. We can change the, the, the tune. So we can tune in which, which frequencies it's listening for. So we go down, as, so you can hear the difference already, that that sounds quite hollow, if you will, kind of, um, it's hard to describe. It's kind of very mid-range, and that's not really my voice. It's kind of very kind of harsh, do you know what I mean, like that? Uh, very nasally. So I'm going to bring that up to about 3.8, 3.8, so 3.852 hertz, which is fine. Harmonics... We had it at 56, didn't we? So we can change that. And again, it's very subtle, but you can hear the difference. Harmonics, I've got at 100. I'm going to bring that down to zero. I don't know if I can notice much difference on that, to be honest with you. Um, let's have a look. If we whack the mix up, so, oh my gosh. Wow. So the Aural Exciter is now working extremely hard, and that's very, very tinny. But if we can, we can dial in the harmonics now, so you can hear the difference between 100 and zero and that sounds awful absolutely awful i don't like that at all <laughs> so let's bring the harmonics up to around about 36 mix we had about 32 because i don't want it i don't want it to overpower what i'm doing do you know what i mean i want my natural voice to come through as much as i possibly can so we're going to change the tune slightly so about there and we're going to leave it like that this is probably completely different to what i had it earlier on i should have taken a snapshot really shouldn't i but there we are I'll have to watch the video back. <laughs> um, so let's go to the next setting here on the right-hand side. This is called the big bottom. Now, bottom you can class as bass, okay? Um, so when it says big bottom, what it means is it gives you an enhanced bass sound to your voice. Now, if I enable that, all of a sudden you hear that, that, that you know, the bass has come in, can't you? You can al almost hear that, that change instantly. Now, I've got that at 71 hertz. That's quite high, so I'm going to drop that down to around about 50, 150, like we did with the um, the high-pass frequency. So they're almost, like I said before, they're almost fighting against each other. So you've got the big bottom adding bass to it, but then you've got the high-pass filter taking bass away from anything lower than 50 hertz, right? Let's go back to that. Uh, drive is kind of like... Um, it's like, a, it's like the drive setting on a guitar amp. You would turn the drive up if you want kind of more grit in that sound, okay? So let's start with zero, and then let's work that up and work that up to 100%. Now that's really, you can hear the bass really, really kicking in now, can't you? And if we go to the mix, that's, that's going to bring the, the mix of all of that bass stuff into the sound that you can hear. And that's absolutely awful. You really don't want any of that. <laughs> because <laughs> that's way too deep. Uh, and if, you, if you're listening through a big TV and you've got a sub bass, a subwoofer going on, that's going to rattle. That's going to rattle your ornaments off the shelf, let me tell you. <laughs> Which is good. I don't like that. That's awful. Sounds, sounds gross. So, and you'll notice, by the way, there's an arrow up at the right-hand side here. Now, if you do that, are you sure you want to revert the effect parameters? Yes. Thank you. 
So that takes it back to the last time it was saved. Thank goodness. So if you make a mistake, you can click that arrow and it takes it back to where it was before, which is cool. So 49 hertz, roughly 50 hertz, as we said before. Drive at around 60% and mix around 33%. I don't want it too much because, you know, you can hear that bass kicking in there. And that's going to affect, if I was doing a voiceover for a client, that would be too much bass to send to the client. Do you know what I mean? So I keep the, the mix at around 33%, which is absolutely fine. So without... That's the sound without the Aphex effects. So that's without the Aural Exciter and without the Big Bottom. Excuse me. And then putting the Aural Exciter on first of all. And then putting the Big Bottom on as well. So it's, it's, it's subtle. You know, you don't want to overpower anything that you're, that you're doing. But if you like the sound of that, then obviously you can use those two things in, in tandem as well, which is pretty cool. Um, Turning processing off completely is the button. That I'm pointing to the screen like you can see it, but of course you can. Uh, so that turns off the processing completely, okay? So there's no processing on, on my voice whatsoever. That's coming, th com coming to you naturally through the microphone, through the Rodecaster Pro, coming out the other end towards the stream, but having absolutely no processing on it whatsoever, okay? So in my headphones, that sounds really kind of dull. That sounds awful, doesn't it? But yeah, in, in my headphones, that's coming through is really, really dull. But as soon as we put that back on, it gives you that sparkle on the Aphex Oral Exciter, and it gives you a little bit of bass notes on the big bottom there, of course. But we also have the high pass filter rolling off some of those bass notes, the noise gate stopping anything coming through. Like, for instance, we take it off, then you can hear all the noise from the computer, you can hear any background noise and any birds that are outside and dogs and stuff like that and lawnmowers and goodness knows what else um but then if we put that back on then you have the noise gate working hard and and cutting out all that stuff that you don't need to hear uh it's a little bit harsh if i'm honest with you two two two, two, two. okay so i'm going to bring that down and the attack and hold bring that down as well because i don't want it to hold too long past my last word but i want the end of my words to be heard. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it, there's a fine balance between how long you want that to hold for and then release. Okay, so release is less than 10 seconds. Let's try that. Drop the hold down slightly and then release it after 0.24 of a second. That's quite, actually, that's better. And the range that it's looking for is that is that range of audio between 100 dB and 0 dB. Okay. So we want, to, we want to go about 30, 30.5 dB thereabouts. That's the kind of frequencies that it's looking for, which is cool. All right, so that's good. de as we mentioned before, lots of different settings on that. Threshold, ratio, attack, release. Release, 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 release. Yeah, okay. Didn't have that on, did we? So that's fine. And we've given it a little bit of gain. We can turn that down if we need to, but bring that up if we need to. So again, you can dial in the gain there in order how much you want the, the DSA to be working. Do you know what I mean? So, so that's pretty cool. Two, 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 one, two, three, four, five. One, two, one, two, one, two. And always, always try and do this through headphones. You can do it through monitors, of course, but you're going to get feedback uh, from, the, from the speakers when you're listening on, on speakers. So don't do that. Uh, use your headphones to get to dial in that that uh, that good sound, okay? And again, frequency you can adjust that on the um, on the DSA compressor. We've mentioned before it's not working particularly hard because I don't like too much compression on it anyway. But you can just see the red kind of tickling just below the zero dB mark on the right hand side there, where my arrow is. And if you can see that on the screen, that's where it's working. So every time I speak loudly, it's um, yeah, it, it's it's stopping it from peaking, if you will. But it's also, you know, if it's working hard and you've got a hard, um, uh, you know, your threshold is, is down here, it's really working now, <laughs> but it sounds awful and it's snatching every single breath and you can hear everything, which I don't like. And you can see that working really hard because that red line is now almost touching negative 15. So it's dropping the volumes by negative 15. You would then need to increase the gain in order to bring back that volume. All right. So I'm going to drop that down to wherever it was before. Um, they're at 21, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, it's about right. So that's not too bad. So I'm happy with that. So, uh, yeah, if you have any questions about uh, all of these settings in the Rodecaster Pro, please do let me know. 
Um, what I'm going to do now is take away some of this and bring in an instance of Studio One 5.5 Pro. It's just been updated as well. Um, the latest release is 5.5.2. A few numbers after that as well, but you don't need to know those. <clears throat> so um, what I'm going to do is just very briefly show you how the the um, the audio looks when I'm doing a voiceover. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I need a bleep button. <clears throat> uh, I need a drink. That's what I need. Oh, there's one here. <laughs> Here's one I made earlier, which is now cold. Okay, so um, so we go for a new song, brand new, empty song. We're just going to call this um, Roadcaster Recording. Roadcaster Recording. And then leave it like that. So we're, sample rate is 48 hertz, 48 kilohertz rather. So high quality, 24-bit resolution. So it's coming in nice and uh, clear and, and clean. And we're having no processing on this whatsoever, by the way. So this is exactly how it's going to come in. So song, track, add a stereo track, bring that down, click on that. You're going to get an echo because um, it's listening to itself. Let's take off the monitor. Put that back on. Okay, here we go. And so press record. So this is a recording of the voiceover artist uh, doing some voiceover work through the Rodecaster Pro and into Studio One 5.5.2. Okay, so now we play that back for you. So this is a recording of the voiceover artist uh, doing some voiceover work through the Rodecaster Pro and into Studio One 5.5.2. Okay, so that's playing that back. Now you can hear that there's some distortion going on there. So the microphone might have been coming in too hot. So I'm going to go to the settings on the board itself and bring down the microphone settings a little bit more. I'm going to delete that. And we're going to bring in a new track. So... This is a second test, now using a slightly less volume on the microphone and recording through the Rodecaster Pro into Studio One 5.5.2. Stop that. And then we play that back. This is a second test, now using a slightly less volume on the microphone and recording through the Rodecaster Pro into Studio One 5.5.2. So I don't know if you noticed, but there are certain things that I don't particularly like about that because you can hear the gate working quite hard in the background. So this is a second t test. Now you this is a this is a so it almost cuts off the first th of the of this. This is a second test. Now using a slight. This is a second. So it's. It's there, but it, you know I'd probably want to do that again if I was doing a proper voiceover and it needed that word pronouncing properly, I would probably do it with less gate coming through so then you would hear my this rather than this. It's like a this, like a diss. Do you know what I mean? So it doesn't sound like a diss. That's, I'm, 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 I am over-exaggerating it, but you get the idea. So this is a second test, now using a slightly less volume on the microphone and recording through the Rodecaster Pro into phone so there's a breath there you can hear which is good and so the gates allowing that breath to come through which is fine phone and phone and recording through the roadcaster pro into studio one but then you listen again that last bit so let me just scroll back scrub back through In test now using a slightly less volume on the microphone and recording through the Rodecaster Pro into Studio One. So there's some noise here. So I'm going to literally separate those two bits. And <laughs> I'm going to over-exaggerate what that sound is, okay? I'm going to bring the volume right up for that. And you can just about, it's quite fine, but you can just about see it. And if I, if I play that back... So that's the sound it makes. That's over-exaggerating it because I've enhanced the volume of it. But yeah, listen. Into studio. <laughs> it's, like, it's like a cymbal crash. Oh, 
into studio. So th there is noise there. So the gate is kind of working, but, you know, I mean, I, I have enhanced that so we can see it as a wave file, but you get the idea that um, the noise gate doesn't prevent everything from not coming through. Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Um, so let me bring that back down to what it should be. Probably about, yeah, about there. So this is how it sounds. Pro into Studio One. So it's there, I can hear it in my headphones, there is a noise there. And if you're sending this to a producer, they would also notice that. So sometimes what I do is go through and I would, um, what, what we call de-breath the voiceover. So through the Rodecaster Pro into, and that's where I would take out that breath. Rodecaster Pro into Studio One 5.5.2. Okay, um, let's go back a bit further. We'll play this again. This is so again. I'd cut the front of that off as well and erase that. This is a second test now using uh, slightly less volume on the microphone. And I might, if I'm really pedantic about it, I would take that breath out as well. The phone and. Just before that next word. And then use the erase tool to just get rid of that. So join those together, phone, and we can bring that closer together if we need to, so the sentence is a little quicker. Your phone and recording through the road, but you don't want it to sound unnatural. That's the point. So sometimes when you take out a breath and you squeeze those together, the the actual phrasing doesn't sound as natural as it would do if you did the whole sentence from scratch. Do you see what I mean? So, you know, it's worth. Um, Using a bit of judgment when you start deep breathing these voiceover um, uh, segments that you that you have, okay. So let's play that from the beginning again. Hang on. Okay, here we go. This is a second test now using uh, slightly less volume on the microphone and recording through the Rodecaster Pro into Studio One five point five point two. Yeah. So you know, obviously, it's not. Um, Let's give that a, to Studio One, the Pro into Studio One 5.5.2. Yeah. The Pro into Studio One 5.5.2. Now, the word studio, studio, st studio, studio, st 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 studio, as in Phil Collins, so studio, studio one. So, studio, I don't know. I'm not happy with that. Studio One. Because it sounds like it's distorted, but it's not. I don't know. I can't describe it. Maybe it's my voice and my teeth are, you know, failing gradually. <laughs> so that's always going to have, a, a, you know, an impact on, um, on how you sound and how, how, you know, how you come across on a microphone. Your teeth obviously play a big part in, in forming those words that you speak. And, you know, your, your, your tongue and the sides of your mouth and the voice server and your larynx and, and the voice box and your lungs and the diaphragm and all that kind of thing. It's all connected in regards to, to, to when you're doing these voiceovers. And, and, you know, if you've got nasty teeth like I have, then there's a chance that some words aren't going to come out as you would hope them to. <laughs> OK, pro into Studio One 5.5.2. But, you know, again, you you'll find ways of of saying things that that um that come out better you you'll find ways of articulating your mouth in order to make those words come out as you would hope them to all right um so yeah that's that's how it sounds coming through the roadcaster pro using the effects that we've dialed in earlier on and then having it recorded into studio one 5.5.5.5.5.2 5 i think it is <laughs> yeah uh, so I'm going to save that. We'll uh, maybe use that on a different um, uh, on a different stream. But yeah, there you go. That's that kind of gives you an overview of, of how things get recorded into into this system here. And this is not using any processing, by the way, on um, on the software. So if I play that, for instance, you'll notice that it's not peaking, which is great. That means that we're not sending too much um, volume through to the recording. Uh, software. If it did, then you'd notice that uh, on the right-hand side here, where my where my mouse is on the far right-hand side of your screen, um, there would be a red mark here. Okay, so you know if you are peaking, let's say for instance, if I turn this up like that and play it now, 
Immediately, you'll notice that it's distorting, but also you've, you've got 39 dB of gain above zero. So that's not good. That's where you start peaking. So again, you want to bring that back to roughly there. Play that again. And we click on that to get rid of that uh, 39. That takes it back to zero. Play it again. See, it's got five, five dB of, of um, extra gain there, which we don't need. So I'm going to bring it down a little bit more. Try that again. There we go. And we've got rid of that now. So, yeah, always good to look at, uh, at the wave file that you're bringing in. If it is too much, then either re-record it or bring this volume uh, down, which you can do whilst you're, whilst you're editing and stuff like that, which is cool. Okay. Now, if I wanted to put processing on it as well, and this is overkill, obviously, but I wanted to just show you. So we would put on, let's say, for instance, um, we don't want that one. <clears throat> Excuse me. We would want... Um, Let's say, for instance, we put a compressor on the inserts of the voice channel, okay? So now, when we play this, you'll notice that the compressor is working. Okay, that's all well and good. We need to make sure we're not peaking, which we're not. Now, the threshold on this compressor, I've got it negative 10 dB. Ratio is 2 to 1, as I, do, as I mentioned earlier. I do like that. The knee is that shape there. I'm pointing to the screen again, like you can see it. You see that flexing? That line is flexing. That's what the knee of that, um, uh, of that compressor is doing, okay? So it's a flat line there sort of thing, upwards, and then you just can bend the knee like that. And you can move this around according to where you want that compressor to go. Let's have a listen again. Now you can see that's really working now, can't you? See what I mean? So, back again. Now by bringing that down, you'll notice that we need to give it some gain, okay? Uh, because you've dropped that down now, we need to give that some gain. So what we do now is... We have the input gain up higher. Wow. Now that's really, really working hard. And that's, yeah, the mix on there is 100%. So we're going to bring the mix down to about halfway. I mean, you know, it doesn't sound bad, but that's the kind of compression sound that you're getting. It's really, really working hard. Um, so again, I would put that probably back up to there. Rich says, hi, I'm sorry I'm late. Mate, you're never late. Don't worry about it. Not a problem. Ratio, again, we want two to one. Threshold, again, down to about, well, 10, negative 10 dB, thereabouts. Play that again. Bring the gain down because, as you can see, we've peaked at 29 dB over, which is not what we want. Let's try that again. Still peaking, so we'll drop it down again. It's at 7 dB. That's it. Now we've got rid of that, um, that peaking on the right-hand side there in the final mix. So you can see there's plenty that you can do and tweak when it comes to compression, either in the software that you're using or indeed on the Rodecaster Pro software that we've been messing with tonight. So um, I hope this has been really, really useful for you. Let me just uh, save this before we go any further. Uh, just save that. And we will exit out of that. Go there. Uh, so yeah, if you have any questions, please do drop them in the comments. We'd love to hear from you uh, as regards to either the Rodecaster Pro or any other um, audio issues that you might be going through yourself, um, then please do let us know. Um, so Danny asked a question, what do you suggest for radio? You've heard some of the compression uh, that we've dialed in, not only using the Rodecaster Pro software, but also the, the Studio, 5, uh, Studio One 5.5 Pro. Um, and like I said before, the radio software tends to deal with it after the effect. So, you know, you would you would do your voiceover normally through the microphone and through your audio channel, through your audio mixer or your audio um, interface. 
And then at that end, at the radio end, it would then give it some boost uh, at the final stages to make it sound more kind of FM radio sort of thing. Which sounds daft because most radios these days are on DAB or digital, aren't they? So, <laughs> um, Yeah, Rich says, sorry I'm late. Uh, mate, you're not late at all. Um, you can always watch the replay, that's the point. So, no problem at all. And by the way, give it a nice thumbs up if you can. It really helps the channel grow. And if you're not subscribed yet, please do subscribe. Click the bell icon as well. That will let you know when I go live next, which is, as I say, generally on a Monday night at 8 p.m. UK time. British summer time as we're currently in. You can always get in touch with the show as well. Email studio at... Oh, no, it's not studio, is it? It's hello at... I should do that instead. Actually, I might, uh, might have a word with my web designers and get... Get a new domain thing. But no, it's hello at loveaudio.co.uk. Hello at loveaudio.co.uk if you would like to get in touch. And we'd love to hear from you. If you are after some um, merch like the T-shirt I'm wearing today, ta-da, modelling the T-shirt today, and I've even retrieved the mug, although mine's a bit kind of chipped and stuff around here. The paint's kind of come off, but (laughs) you get the idea. So if you want a Love Audio mug or you want a Love Audio T-shirt like this, and uh, get yourself over to loveaudiosmerchstore.com and you'll find all the details you need there. If you want to look at the website, it's loveaudio.co.uk. And no, I haven't changed the image yet, which I should do. Um, <laughs> I keep meaning to do that and I, I haven't done it yet. Um, and if you want to check out my other channel, that of course is loveaudiobits.co.uk. And that's where you'll find audio spares, microphones, mic cables, mic stands, mic muffs, uh, mic... Anybody else's name called Mike? Yeah, yeah. Um, so stuff like that is on that particular website. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it, I think, for tonight. Thanks so much for joining. Glad you were all, all made it. And um, I hope it's been useful for you. If it has and you've got some questions outside of the stream, just drop them in the comments of the video itself, and I will get around to answering them as soon as I possibly can, okay? But until uh, next time, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.